Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather and it's 10 to 14 days for today's second video. Day 10 will take us to the 22nd of December and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS and ECM ensembles. They run to around a couple of weeks. Have a look at CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks and that gets us into the first week or so of January. I'll get off that view in a moment. We're going to start off with the development stratosphere wise. So I'll bring you an update of everything that's going on in the stratosphere. Uh, in a moment. Just say the first video is our 7 a.m. upload, so uh, make sure you check that out. And uh, yeah, 7 a.m. upload was the first video uh, released today. Um, I had scheduled a live stream uh, for tonight, but again, I'm just feeling a little bit fatigued, a little bit run down, so uh, no live stream uh, this week. I'm so sorry, everybody, but you know, I don't really want to live stream until I'm feeling absolutely uh, 100%. I am still feeling rather run down. Uh, uh, after a long season of uh, winter updates. So I hope everybody will uh, forgive me for uh, cancelling this week's uh, Sunday live stream. And uh, hopefully we'll be back live streaming uh, next Sunday. And uh, we'll do Ensembles Watch for you next Sunday uh, live. But uh, I'm going to have another restful sort of uh, evening and night, I think, and just try and get my energy levels back up because I am feeling rather fatigued uh, at the moment. So, uh, so yeah, I hope that's okay uh, with everybody. Uh, right, okay. Let's bring you up to date what's going on in the stratosphere then. So uh, this is how the situation is currently looking at 10 HPA in terms of stratospheres, uh, stratospheric temperatures over the North Pole uh, compared to the, the grey line, which is the, the long-term uh, average. So um, you can see at this time of year, we're about at our coldest point of the year uh, now, around here with the grey line. The black line is, is down somewhere between around minus 70 and uh, minus 80 degrees. So we're actually a little bit colder on average in the stratosphere at 10 HPA. The, the temperature is a little bit below uh, average at, uh, at 10 HPA. Um, not excessively so, not excessively cold, you know, but, but it's certainly a bit colder than average. And it's associated with a little bit of strengthening of uh, the zone of westerlies as well. Uh, the zone of westerlies um, in the stratosphere are a little bit stronger uh, than average. At 30 HPA, we've gone down to around minus 18 uh, as well. So that's where the temperature currently is sitting at uh, 30 HPA, which is you know, a little bit closer to the trot here. But both levels, 10 and 30 HPA, were actually colder than average. You know, say that is associated with, with a strengthening of the zone of westerlies at the moment. This is how temperatures are currently forecast to develop uh, from the latest GFS run at uh, 10 HPA. So the blue-purple colours, they are the cold temperatures that we got at uh, 10 HPA. Uh, of course, we find those uh, those uh, cold temperatures under or around or under minus 18, 10 HPA continue through uh, the next few days. We do see a warming beginning to gather pace so over Siberia. So um, we've got quite a significant, it's not a sudden stratospheric warming, but quite a significant warming of the stratosphere is taking place over Siberia uh, as we get through to the 20th of December. That might be the start of a transition towards a, 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 a mid-winter sun stratospheric warming. Sometimes they do develop like this and, you know, they're slow burners. Um, we're into the range now beyond day 10 to 22nd of December. And again, you see the, the green, yellow colours all piling in towards uh, Siberia. And, uh, and, and, yeah, you know, proper strengthening of, uh, of that uh, warming. Again, not a sun traffic warming. I have to be very careful with my language because some people will look at that and think that's a sun traffic warming. That is not a sun traffic warming at that point. But it might be a precursor. If you see what I mean, it could be a precursor to a sudden stratospheric warming. And that uh, can, carries on uh, right the way through towards the end of December, gets to 28th of December. Um, when it's beginning to fade a little bit by then, uh, actually, uh, you know, might be having a bit of a pause before it regathers itself. But it is quite interesting. You see the, the green yellow colours sort of piling up like that and pulling into themselves in that sort of fashion. It can sometimes be like a precursor to a sun transformation. But up to, like, a Christmas anyway, we keep these blue colours going over the pole itself. That's over Siberia, of course. So over the pole itself, we keep those cold temperatures uh, going up to, you know, up, up to Christmas. This explains a little bit what I'm talking about in terms of that precursor with the uh, warming. So this is from uh, December 2012. This is this day uh, in uh, 2012, nine years ago, in terms of that stratospheric temperature. You see you've got a cold stratosphere, but it's blue purple because they're uh, in at 10 HPA over the Arctic and over the North Pole. Now, as we go a few days on, so let's say the 17th of uh, December, again, we keep those blue purple colours going. We go a few more days further on to the 20th of December. We just start to see a little bit of a 
Uh, a little bit of green starting to appear over here across uh, Siberia. Let's go a few more days on down the, to around Christmas Eve. And then we see those blue pokers really starting to pile up, you know, over Siberia. Again, at this point, that's not a sudden traffic warming, but it is like a, a precursor to what will be a sudden traffic warming uh, in a few days further on. So we have these blue pokers sort of piling up over Siberia as we go through uh, the Christmas period, and, and they carry on, you know, up to Christmas Day, and then they carry on uh, to Boxing Day uh, as well. And again, we're short of a sudden stratospheric one, but a significant warming is clearly going on, starting like in the Mediterranean, North Africa actually, going all the way up to uh, Siberia. And this just sort of strengthens on a day-by-day -day, uh, basis, actually. So uh, 27th of December, again, a little bit stronger, again, with that warming. What, what you would call a slow burner, of a uh, stratospheric warming. Again, that's the 28th of December. Still short of a sudden stratospheric warming, but getting ever warmer on a day by day basis. That's the 29th of December, a little bit warmer still. In a moment, we're going to see the red colours appear, and there we are. That's the 30th of December 2012, and those red colours are indicative of, you know, a proper then sudden stratospheric warming that's, uh, that's beginning to occur over Siberia. And of course, that strengthens as we come. To the end of 2012, that's New Year's Eve. And then we go into 2013. Let's go to January 1st. There we go. Uh, and there yeah, we see a proper sun traffic warming on New Year's Day of 2013 taking place over uh, over Siberia. And that just gathers pace and uh, pushes into the North Pole with those deep red colours infiltrating into the Arctic. There we go. Proper sun traffic warming uh, through the first week of the January is uh, taking place and then up to uh, the 10th January we get like a split then of the polar vortex of course and its roots in the stratosphere see the two lobes of blue going off one to Pacific side the Arctic one down into the Atlantic and that is a proper split the polar vortex for the polar vortex at its roots in the stratosphere so yeah, I'm not saying we're going to get to that, but you know when we see the uh, as we just established when we see those green yellow colours sort of piling up like that over Siberia, it's one to watch. It can sometimes, sometimes not always that might just fizzle out, you know, and just fade away in the end. But sometimes that can be a precursor to a sun traffic one. So we'll keep an eye on that. Right, uh, CT is looking like this. We're currently standing at 5.3, which is just 0.3 of a degree above average. That is provisional to the 11th of uh, December. Uh, upper air temperatures are on the way up, as we've been saying in videos lately. The next week is going to be my upper red line. is a 30-year upper air temperature average for London. We're starting off above average at the boat. We're going to see those upper air temperatures increasing as we go through uh, the next week. So becoming very uh, much milder. With the upper air temperature, remember, it's not as straightforward as this because down on the surface, it could actually be quite cold but um, because we're under high pressure. But certainly upper air temperatures lifting up next week. And then we've got this cooling train still going on around the Christmas period and beyond it. There are, there's a big split, you know, in the ensembles. We've got some some members up here, some ensemble members down there. So a, a big old split is currently going on with the, uh, with the um, upper air temperatures as we get in towards the Christmas period. And uh, clearly some of these uh, GFS ensemble members are very, very cold. I may actually do a video for Ensembles Watch uh, this evening if I've got to. I'll see, you know, because doing a recording, it's not as, uh, as uh, um, you know, not as taxing as, as doing a, uh, doing an hour-long live stream and whatnot. So I might do a video this evening for Ensemble's Watch, but I'll see. Because there are some very cold outlier members that are there. Um, but equally, we can't discount these milder Ensemble members up here. So Christmas really is still uh, up for grabs, you know. In terms of precipitation, it's going to be very dry over the next week to 10 days. Lots of dry weather coming up. And then over the Christmas period, it just starts to look a little bit more unsettled. Well, that's very extended range. It's a long way off. And even then, it's not overly unsettled, to be honest. Lots of dry weather continuing for the next uh, week to 10 days, uh, at least, although starting off mild and then becoming uh, colder. So temperature anomaly. Let's just have a quick look at the uh, lower surface temperature, shall we, actually, before we move on. So, uh, again, we still see that cooling trend um, with the surface temperatures for London. Starting off very mild, 12 degrees, going down to around here, around the Christmas period. So that's kind of like 4 or 5 degrees 
Mr. Normally overcooking the temperatures by a degree or two as well, by the way, uh, and, and, and going cold, you know, going cold at night with overnight frost uh, with some of those on some level. So clearly we still have that cooling trend, even if we don't pull in any notably cold air from, from the east uh, and from the north. There will still be a cool down that takes place under the high pressure that is likely to produce frost and fog. Right, temperature anomaly should be up to the uh, 20th of December, going to be mild and average, just, not just for the UK, but through most parts of Europe. Precipitation anomalies from the 12th to 20th of December, they're going to be drier than average. The latest wind flow map from earthnoldschool.net shows that we're drawing in south westerly winds. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, very mild out there uh, today, of course. This is how the latest UK Met is looking for Wednesday with high pressure to the south and low pressure to the north, bringing up a very mild uh, southwesterly wind. So a lot of dry weather through to the uh, second half of the week with high pressure sort of uh, intensifying over top of the country at 1,040. Millibars, that's a very intense area of high pressure to say the least. And up to, uh, up to uh, day 8, which is a week today, Sunday 19th of December, we are firmly under that area of high pressure and still, uh, you know, with a central pressure of 1,040 millibars, high and dry. But we'll be turning colder on the surface, of course, under that high pressure and increase the risk of frost and fog. We have a GFS uh, midnight run. He's looking again, winds coming in from the southwest on Wednesday, and then the high pressure inflates over country for the second half of the week, takes over and brings lots of dry weather. And uh, that carries on then into the weekend under the centre of that high pressure. We are centred under the high pressure, so it will be turning colder with overnight frost and fog, a distinct possibility. And they're running up to day 10, actually having a uh, go at building up a Scandinavian high here. This is 22nd of December. Uh, it looks like I've got a Scandinavian high from uh, Norway over towards Iceland. Trough of low pressure is underneath that. Um, the high bank sort of slips out, so it doesn't, it isn't able to maintain itself over Scandinavia all that long. So just anti-cyclonic running up towards Christmas on this GFS run with a lot of dry weather, but also feeling cold. And that carries on, you know, right way up to Christmas. So this is Christmas Day. Uh, again, looking very anti-cyclonic, dry, cold frosty, probably foggy as well. The high pressure has another go going north on Boxing Day. High pressure is trying to pull up towards uh, Greenland and uh, Iceland. So again, looking dry and cold there on the 26th of December. And then through to the uh, 28th, uh, so as we go, with this uh, GFS midnight run. Again, very anti-cyclonic. High pressure is still there, maintaining dry, cold, frosty weather. The real cold, um, snowy cold, if you like, is still across northern uh, and uh, northern Europe, you know, with this northerly wind. GFS uh, 6Z, looks like that. Again, high pressure building up from the south as we go through second half of the week. 1,014 millibar area of high pressure taking over across the country. That high pressure is sitting over top of the country as we go through the weekend. Bring lots of dry and fine weather, but it will be cold with a risk of overnight frost and fog. And then up to day 10, no real changes. The high pressure still maintained over top of the country. The dry weather continues. And uh, yeah, you'd expect more overnight frost and fog with that. And then running up towards Christmas, high pressure just begins to slip a little bit towards central east parts of Europe, trying to allow something a bit milder into the far west and northwest. So Scotland and Northern Ireland on this GFS run, turning a little bit milder, but England and Wales staying uh, quite dry and cold. Um, the high pressure isn't finished, though, even up to the very end of the GFS uh, 6 m that high pressure is still dominating the weather over the UK and much of Europe. GM looks like that. Again, winds are in from the southwest through uh, Wednesday through Thursday and Friday. The high pressure builds northwards, takes over, sits over the top of the country, bringing lots of dry and fine weather. And then we go on into uh, the following weeks. This is Monday, 20th of December again, with high pressure through the country and going north, bringing loads of dry, but also potentially quite cold weather. And up to day 10, which is the 22nd of December, we're still sitting under that area of high pressure, mostly dry uh, and cold with overnight frost and it does look really cold across much of northern Europe as well with those northerly winds really digging in um, to you know proper freezing cold weather across much of northern Europe there and then the ECM looks like that again the high pressure building up from the south as we go through the middle part of the week high pressure in control of weather uh, on Friday and into the weekend that high pressure is just dominating the conditions with time trying to reach northwards but not quite uh, pulling it off up to day 10 got the high pressure sitting over Slightly to west of the country, pulling down cold northerly 
wins at that point in Scandinavia. And again, we're just on the periphery of the car. But, you know, we bring minus five south south Iceland onto the east coast. And only a very, very slight adjustment to this will start to pull in some very cold air from the northeast. So don't rule out the chance, but we might get some really cold weather, actually, as uh, we go towards Christmas. Equally, don't rule out the chance. It might just stay frosty and foggy. Uh, these have got some table of the ECM on Summer State Board. Day 10 gets the 22nd of December. 19 members of the ECM on Summer's have high pressure sitting over the top of the country and slightly to our north around the high. We're bringing in wind from a bit of an easterly direction, so mainly dry and quite cold. With that, 18 crew the control and the operational room taking the high pressure further away from us and pulling in a pretty cold northeasterly wind. So, uh, you know, mainly dry again, but on the periphery of proper cold weather uh, at day 10 and 14 again anti-cyclonic high pressure over to the north country and again again around the high we're bringing in the winds from like an easterly direction in two weeks time these are the options that we've got this would get us to the 27th of december 31 members of the ecl ensembles have high pressure sitting to our north and around the high we're bringing in the winds from an easy direction so cold and dry still uh with that uh, with those options 31 and then 20 take high pressure a little bit further northwestwards actually getting up towards greenland and iceland and that will start to open the door to proper cold and wintry conditions from the northeast we would start to see snow probably moving in from the east with that trough of uh, low pressure so either cold and dry or you know really cold and, and becoming wintry looks like it's the two options that we've got after christmas so um both involving cold just to varying degrees uh, CFSB2 finally looking like this. These are 500 millibar height spreading down to week periods. The first week period takes us from the 12th to the 18th of December. The coming week has high pressure to our east, low pressure away to the northwest. We're bringing up wind from like a southwesterly direction, so mainly dry and uh, reasonably mild to start off with. Mainly, uh, we go through the week two, which is going to be the 19th to 25th of December, Christmas Day. High pressure is over Scandinavia around that. We're bringing in winds from an easterly direction. So a lot of dry weather, but uh, pretty cold with that. You know, trying to pull cold rare in from off the continent. Week uh, three will be the 26th of December Boxing Day to New Year's Day, 1st of January. High pressure centre around Greenland and Iceland. Low pressure to the south and winds again coming in from right back northeasterly direction. So uh, at the very least it looks cold and for more southern and eastern areas, we could bring in some snow showers from the east with that. And then we go through to week four, which is the second through to the 8th of January. Still very blocked, isn't it? High pressure around Greenland down towards Scandinavia. Around that, we're probably bringing in a wind from like an easterly, southeast direction. So you could certainly envisage there could be some pretty cold and uh, wintry conditions on offer. Uh, with uh, that even as we go through the first week of January. Temperature anomalies for week one from CFSC 2 to up to the 18th of December are milder than average. It is a warm week coming up, but week two goes colder. This is the 19th of December to Christmas Day. And cold, especially across England and Wales. Week three is the 26th of December to the 1st of January. Average to a little bit below average. And then week four actually goes uh, a little bit milder than average. I'm a bit surprised about that i reckon that could still be quite a cold week based on that um 500 millibar height anomaly that we see there fundamentally it's still blocked it looks like we air should still be coming in really from from the east and the northeast to me so i can't really see why that would go especially milder than uh average so yeah it's quite an interesting outlook isn't it and pretty cold much of the time across uh, the continent as well so, uh, yeah, you know, uh, we'll wait and see how it all plays out, of course. Right, if you enjoyed the video, please can you smash the like button, make sure you sub to the channel. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. And drop a comment and say anything about this and all of our videos. That's amazing. That is incredible. Thank you so much uh, for doing that. So, as I say, you can have a bit of a rest again. Uh, you see, you're still feeling quite tired and, uh, and a bit worn out. So, uh, you know, I think I'm going to leave the live stream until I'm feeling properly up for it so um i don't want to disappoint anybody by not, by not being very good on the stream so uh so uh no lighting tonight i should be having a little bit of a rest i might do an upload you know a 10 minute upload or looking at 12z or something like that might be appearing uh this evening they're fine you know they're no problem to do those it's always a live stream to 
very tiring when you're not feeling too well. So, um, so yeah, uh, that's going to be, uh, might be coming up this evening. I'll see what time I have and how I feel uh, a little bit later on. But uh, for this 10 to 14 day, or anyway, uh, oh, just show you what's coming up tomorrow. So we'll have a 7 a.m. upload, of course. We'll have a 10 to 14 day as well. I've got another Christmas update coming up for you tomorrow uh, also. Uh, but for this video, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.